Take this one. Thank you. And this should relieve you of the fever. Thank you. Yeah. It's Pastor Maso. I'm not available. At least you should speak with him first. No. And why? Because I'm not available. I think you should answer his call and tell him yourself you are... I say no. Okay. Moses. I'm here, sir. Thank you. I'll go and park the car. Yes, sir. We are not traveling again. Okay, sir. You can enjoy. Yes, sir. I suggest you call the chairman of the convention planning committee, Pastor Sagi, tell him that I'm sorry we'll not be able to come to the program again. I tell him that uh, we're on our way when we turn back because of some situation. So, and I'm aware of the advertisement and publicity they've made ahead of my coming as the main speaker. But um, I'm very sorry. I'm not able to make the program. All right, sir. I'll call them right away. So that they can make an alternative arrangement. Yes, Daddy. Okay. Yes, sir. How are you feeling now? Oh. I thought this whole thing was over. I thought so myself. I take my rest. I use my supplement. I eat healthy. I don't sleep late. For the past three weeks now, I have not traveled out of this city. So I don't know the source of this problem. Uh, sir, I called Pastor Osage himself and explained everything to him. He said he will convey the message to the General Basia. Good. Sister Messi, the head of media unit is waiting to see you, sir. He can't see anyone now. He needs to rest. Um, okay, tell her to see Pastor Adibo, the resident pastor. Uh, Ma, I think it's about the documentary they are shooting for the church. There is an information that needs clarification. I'm going to see her. Bring her in. Good afternoon, Mommy. Good afternoon, Nancy. Daddy, sir. Yes. Yeah, we are finished with the compilation of the introduction to the history of the church ahead of its 40th anniversary. Good. But there is um, a little bit of herald which I need you to clarify. What is the information? The information has to do with the number of parishes the church has and the nations where the branches are. I was confusing about that. The resident pastor to have been able to give that. Sir, we need you to confirm it before we start recording. He said we have a total number of 392 branches. Uh -uh. Who said that? The resident pastor, sir. That was wrong. You ought to have known. Was he not the one who read the reports two years ago at the national convention? The total number of the church worldwide was 452. So how come it is not 392? That was why he insisted on confirming from you before we start recording. I'm sure we've heard it before that the total number was 452. Yes. 
452. And the mission effort of the brethren in France and Portugal have increased the total number of the branches of the church worldwide to 589. I was able to confirm this from the regional overseers during the last meeting. The Europe regional overseer have told me that there were more mission outreaches going on in Portugal, in France, in Belarus, in Sweden, and Finland. So, more souls are being reached and the church is going rapidly. Thank you, Daddy. One more thing. Okay. The pastor in charge of administration said we have sent a total of 293 missionaries to African nations. Yes. And the total number of missionaries we have in Asia is 185. And 170 missionaries in Europe. That means the total number of 585 missionaries worldwide. And we have just built the 11th orphanage for the motherless babies. Okay, wow. Um, thank you, sir. Um, one more thing. But wait, have mercy. Have mercy on me. I've turned back from a tree because I wanted to rest at home. Any further question, go and ask the general secretary of the church. All right, sir. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry to have bothered you. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you, ma. Okay. Thank you, mercy. Um, now, but I think you can now rest. Yes, I will. I have sent for the doctor. He's on his way. Um, but before he's arrived, would you like to take something? I'm not hungry yet. Uh, uh sir, the Chama Pentecostal Conference of Nigerian Ministers is waiting to see you, sir. That's Pastor Oscar Lawi. Um, will you be able to see him? Or I just simply say to him, you're not available, so you can rest. That's the chairman. I have to see him. Bring him in. All right, sir. Ah, my chairman, good morning. Ah, how are you, Reverend? <laughs> I'm sorry that I bumped into you this morning. Um, you see, I know you'll be preparing for the Agape Apostolic Center Convention, but I had to uh, see you urgently. Yeah. Actually, I was on my way to the convention where we had a turn back because um, I was feeling weak and I needed rest and the Holy Spirit was telling me that I need to come back and rest. And um, I already called them that we will not be able to come. Yeah, I have an urgent message from the Lord to you. Um, um, Robin, can you ask your deacon to excuse us? Yeah. Deacon Joe? All right, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, um, see, when I woke up this morning, I had a message which was heavily impressed upon my heart. And when I got the message, you know, I felt so awkward that I would be the one to deliver such a message to the whole Secretary General, you know, of the Pentecostal Conference of Ministers. But I didn't, I had, no, I had no option. I couldn't resist. I couldn't refuse. That is why I came this morning. Yeah. But, um, Chairman, you... You just have to say it. I know you could not have concocted such message in your heart. The Lord have given you the message for, for me. So, say it. The Lord said, you should make your ways right in His presence. Go on. That's the message, sir. That's the message? Yes, sir. That I should make my way perfect in His presence? That's what the Lord said exactly. Maybe if you pray, the Lord will enlighten you more and give you understanding. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you and bless your family. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Reverend. My regards to the family. What type of message is that? I should make my way perfect in His presence. What do you think the Lord could be talking about? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know what the message means. He suggested we pray about it. I will pray over it, though I don't understand what it means. Hmm. Uh, sir, he's here, sir. Hmm. Pastor Maxwell. 
Who sent for him? Uh, he said he called you, sir. You said he should come. Me? Call him? How? Where? When? Go and call him in. Let's hear what he wants to say. No. Let's hear what he wants to say to her. To I her. don't want to hear his voice. He sent two of his helpers to you. To come and apologize on his behalf. You didn't give them audience. Because I don't want to be reminded of the evil he has done. He sent you a London letter. Begging you. Asking for your forgiveness. Even the letters are full of lies. Then maybe he's coming to beg you. I don't need his apology. Please, only let him come in and just hear what he wants to say. Please. No. Go and call him. No. I said call him here. No. Now. Okay, okay. Pastor Maxwell, the general overseer of True Shepherd Revival Assembly. You said you called me this morning and I told you that you should come. Um, I'm very sorry, sir. We, I called this morning, but um, nobody picked the call, sir. So? I didn't ask you to come, did I? Um, no, sir. Please, I'm very sorry for everything, sir. It's because it's a matter of urgency that we came to see you. Please, don't reject us, sir. Now you see me, so what? <sighs> Daddy. Um... Since we left the church three years ago, we have come to realize that we have done you a great wrong. Please, forgive us. That's why we're here, for you to pray for us and also forgive us, sir. Pastor Maxwell, haven't you gone over this matter many times? Have at least you and your wife to move on with your lives. So why are you here again to haunt me? Daddy, I know you have released us, but it's been strong in our spirit that your spirit is not happy with us. And that's why we've come to seek your forgiveness and your prayer, sir. And so, what is the prayer point now? Since we left three years ago, with the whole provincial headquarters in Benin and 20 other churches in Edo State. Our lives have not been the same, sir. Though we enjoyed the first year. But from the second anniversary, things have been going down for us, sir. And your Holy Spirit told you that I'm the cause of the downward turn of your lives? You told me that the Holy Spirit told you to pull the entire headquarter church away with the 20 branches which you personally labored to establish. You took away all the coastal buses that the congregation contributed money to buy. You took away the landed property, including the secondary school that was built by the provincial headquarters. You took away everything. You said the Holy Spirit spoke to you that you are laboring under closed heaven. And I release you. Has your Holy Spirit now spoken to you that I am the cause of your downward turn again? No, Daddy. No. Mommy, please help us beg Daddy. Please forgive us. Please. Pastor Maso, now what has happened to the church? Mommy, the worst has happened. Please, we need you to pray for us. The government has demolished four of our churches. Jesus. They said they wanted to do a road expansion. But after the demolition, they decided to stop the expansion. My associate pastors in charge of Owan, Esako, Ishan have all dispersed with their various branches, sir. 
How is um, Pastor Andrew Ajele, the barista I ordained, as the pastor in charge of the Zona headquarters in Uromi, who later rose up and stood behind you against me and took me to court? And he won the case. Daddy, please. It's all my fault. You did not appoint him as a deputy general overseer. You trusted him so much. And you placed him as the resident pastor of your headquarters church. We were we were fools. We were very foolish. It's actually my fault, sir. When I heard that Andrew Ajele had pulled out from under you with your headquarters church, I knew that you have hit your dead end. Is that the reason why you now came back here to me begging? After you have wasted a lot of resources in the prodigality of shadow chasing? Daddy, mommy, in fact, this is not the main thing. You just have to forgive us so that this cause can leave us. Pleasant, our first child, has been in the hospital for the past five weeks, please, daddy. Please, mommy. Daddy, please. when we went to God, in a three days fasting and prayer session, on the very third day, God told us to come to you and mommy, to seek your forgiveness, and to ask you to pray for us, so that this cause can leave our heads, daddy. Which God told you that? I am forgiving you. But I'm not in the mood to pray for anybody now. Some people have to learn to live with the consequences of the evil they have done. Ah, oh, my daddy. Ah, oh, my daddy, daddy, please. Daddy, please. Please have mercy on please me. Please have mercy. Leave my leg alone and move away from me. Honey, honey, please, please. I am not in the mood to pray for... I am forgiving you. I am not in the mood to pray for anybody now. To pray for you? Ah. When I checked my Bible, I did not see where Elisha prayed for Gehazi to be healed of his leprosy. And I didn't see where Peter prayed for Ananias and Sapphira to be brought back to life. Some betrayers have to learn to live with the consequences of the evil they've done. Get away from my side. Get out of the room. Daddy, please, let's forgive them. And pray for them so that we can leave them to God to do to them as it pleases and so that we won't be a partaker of the consequences of their mistake. I said I'm not in the mood to pray now. It's because you have not forgiven them from your heart. See, I was traveling and I turned back just to come and rest at home. So I've come here to rest. You can leave now. Get out of my sight. Mommy, please help us beg daddy. Mommy, please. Please. It's okay. Pastor Maso, Sir Gladys, don't worry. All will be well. You can start going. We shall do another meeting some other time. You can go. As you can see, it's not in the mood. I know I have offended you. I know I have done you wrong. But please, find it in your heart to, to forgive and pray for us. We have gone to God in repentance and he says he has forgiven us but we have to come to you to seek your forgiveness and prayers so that this cause can leave our heads i said i'm not in the mood to pray get out of my sight please he said he's not in the mood to pray you come back thank you Hello? Huh? Ah! Ah! Pleasant! Pleasant is dead! Pleasant is dead! Ah! 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 Yay! 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 Oh my god! Oh. Ah, I am finished! Ah. Pleasant is dead! Mommy. My son is dead! The evil consequences <laughs> have finally consumed my son! Where is he?
sorry, Pastor Maxwell. I forgive Pastor Maxwell. I forgive you, Pastor Maxwell. I forgive you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry. I'm sorry. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father forgive your trespasses. Ha! I have said I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh God. Pastor Maxwell, I forgive you. On I that eternal verdict, all your sins from the day you were born to the day you had your final breath are brought before the Lord, and your sins have not been forgiven. <laughs> Follow me, and face your consequences. Follow you to where? <laughs> Follow me, to your eternal abode. <laughs> oh, a sleepless night, in the winter of Europe. <laughs> Upon all sacrificial lives and self denial. <laughs> Upon the hunger and thirst for the expansion of his kingdom. <laughs> Upon all long fasting to secure his presence. <laughs> all the souls that have been won on mission field and outreaches. <laughs> Upon all hundreds of branches of churches in Asia, Africa and Europe. Ha! All my years of labor wasted on a minor heartly matter. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs>